but what we're fishing here, the type of structure is an island right here with two portions of the channel that meet right there and we're positioned right at the tip of it. Fish. All right, one pull. <laughs> what, five fish? Is that what it was, five guys? Five fish and a muskie. First ever muskie right First there. First muskie. First ever. Heck yeah, that is a thick fish to start with. Look at the monster. That is an awesome fish, y'all. That was a fight and a half. That's what we came for. Yes, sir. Yeah, buddy. All right, guys. Here's a 52 pound blue cat with my buddies Casey and Jeremy. That's our second 50 of the night. Look at this fish. I can't even hold him up. What's going on guys? This is going to be part two of the introduction to structure fishing, bottom contours, and how to read the topography of a lake. And that is your fundamental premise to fishing and how you can catch big fish anywhere in the country by learning how to read the water and understanding fish and their movements. What you just saw, all those fish clips were from this type of stuff. So in the last video, if you haven't watched it yet, I'll put a link in the description below and also an iCard up here. Uh, it taught you what a topography map is and how to access those for free on the internet through the web app called Navionics. Now additionally in that video, I gave some beginner introductions to contours, what contours are, breaks and break lines, and started to show some examples of topography. Now in this video, I'm going to go more in depth on the different types of breaks, break lines, and bottom structure on lakes throughout the country. And all of this is basically a brief summary of Buck Perry and his books. There's like an eight volume series on fish and their behavior and stuff like that. But I am trying to summarize it and at least give beginner information on that material just to get you introduced to it and how you can use it to chase the biggest fish in freshwater and saltwater. But most of this stuff, I'm just focusing on freshwater because that's what I, I do. Um, and I am going to share the information on how I've been successful and how many of my friends have been successful as well. And you guys know, at least most of you who have been here since the beginning, that this is a no BS channel. I'm not going to sell you a line of bull crap. This is real stuff, how to catch real big fish anytime and anywhere. Some conditions are harder than others, and you've got to tough it out. But if you watch any of my videos, I'm here to give you the real information on fishing and and give you the basic tenets of what I do and how to have a good time on a lake and let you come along with me. Um, there's just been far too many fishing shows and stuff like that and information that just sells you a, a, a bunch of line of crap, honestly. And um, it's just preying on people uh, for their money, especially entry-level people into fishing. So I'm trying to be that gap in between having to deal with all that crap and then finally finding the real information because when I first started I had to go through a lot of that crap before I met some friends who showed me this Buck Perry stuff and I don't want you guys to spend years of your time uh, going through um, information that isn't the best so I'm gonna be the one who exposes you to the stuff the real deal stuff it's an early Sunday morning before work, and my voice is still kind of gone, so uh, you'll have to bear with me on that. I'm going to do my best to speak as loudly and clearly as possible, but thanks for joining along. If you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button or go through all the different videos we've got of big, giant freshwater fish of almost every species that I've got in my area, and uh, enjoy. All right, guys, so the first thing we are going to talk about in this Basically, this is going <clears> to <throat> feel like a class or a college lecture on, on fishing. That's what we're kind of going for here. This is what you study, the material you look at before you actually go fishing. It's your homework. And we're trying to understand how fish move, what they do, and how to catch more of them. So, in this video, we're going to, to, to discuss the basic types of structures. Now, structures are bottom contours. The bottom features, if you will, of the lake. And the first one, and almost the most important one, we're going to look at, it's called a bar. Now, there's a lot of different types of bars, but basically it's a point or a finger or a, a type of topography that leads from the shallow water to the deep water. And they look 
different in many different ways. So uh, there are a couple in this area we're looking at right here. This is the Navionics web app. And um, we're going to look at the most pronounced one first because that's going to be the best example. Okay, so as discussed in the last video, the home of the fish is deep water. They use topography or bottom contours when they become active. How shallow they become or how shallow they go is determined by how active they are and the type of water conditions you've got in the area. Um, those water conditions can be current, uh, water clarity if you're in a super clear area they generally won't come up as shallow because fish are light sensitive or they need light filtration and how that happens is uh, cloud cover or uh, water color now you don't want super dark water but there's a good healthy mix and the best type of water clarity is milky white um, so basically right now what we're looking at is the main tennessee river channel here you can see it super deep 60 something feet deep everywhere and we've got this side feeder stream cut right here which is formed by a creek bed that hits the main tennessee river channel now on either end of this are two bars there are two different types of bars this is a really shallow bar uh, that has a different type of break and then this is the most pronounced bar which is what we're going to look at because it's the easiest to pick apart because it's the most defined now, here's this creek channel. You can see it 50 something feet and then it drops to 65. So when these fish are inactive, they're gonna be out here in this channel just chilling basically. But when they have an activity period, they're gonna use this creek channel to become active and these bars right here. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna look at this one right here. So you can tell we're at eight, nine feet of water right here. And this bar reaches all the way out to the deepest water in the area, which is 65 feet. And what we're looking at at the very tip of it right here is what's called a contact point. That is the first place the fish are going to hit when they become active. Now, if they are very active, they'll move up in waves up onto this point and even all the way up to the shore. Now, the biggest fish are going to be the deepest the smaller fish are going to come up shallower more often and be more active. That's just how it works. So this right here is a basic exam example of a bar or a point on a reservoir. Now they look the same on lakes, uh, naturally formed lakes, but sometimes they aren't as defined because they don't have this main river channel right here that cuts in. So all of this was flooded before TVA made the dam. This is old farmland fields, stuff like that. And, uh, this is just a prime example of a point or a bar leading out to the deep water and uh, a perfect place for fish to come up and become active. Now, the bass guys, you'll see them beating the bank right here, and a lot of times they won't catch anything because these fish are way out here in 20, 30, 40, 50 feet of water, and they're just passing right over them, uh, running from stump to stump on the bank. You've got to pick apart these deep areas. Um, on this channel, I mainly focus on striper and catfish, which will stay deeper more often than bass because they are bigger fish. Um, but they can come up here in this shallow water when they are very active. So this is your first example of basic structure or topography, a point or a bar. All right, so now we know how to find a bar or a point that leads directly to deep water and the importance of that and how fish use that to become active. Now you can go find situations like this on any of your lakes or rivers and fish those for the type of fish you want to go for. Now, different fish relate to those structures differently at different depths, basically. So catfish, bigger fish, stripers, bigger fish, stuff like that, musky. Uh, they are going to be generally deeper than your smaller fish, they, like your crappie, your, uh, your bass. Um, even the bass can be super deep, but they'll move shallower uh, more prevalently than the big catfish. So um, now you can go and find those on your lakes and rivers and fish those. Now, tons of different ways to fish it. You can drift it, drag it, bump it, uh, jig it. Tons of different stuff. We're not discussing that in this video. That's for another uh, another video on techniques and controls and stuff like that. But we're just 
systematically going through the process of beginning fishing and understanding how fish work and how to find them on your lakes. And if you're just in the right area throwing cut bait on the bottom or drifting live bait, you're going to start catching fish um, with that basic knowledge. But we'll start to hone in on the precise details of controls and bait presentations as we go. And I am learning along the way with you. I read these books in college and haven't really looked at them uh, uh, since then. So I'm reading back through these myself and picking up on things that I didn't see before. Um, I didn't have a boat in college, so most of this stuff I had to try to do from a, the bank. But now I have a boat, I have a decent graph, uh, and I can see what's going on on the bottom, and I can apply it with you guys. And uh, in between these videos on structures and fish movements and stuff like that, I'm going to apply it and catch big fish doing it, or at least try. Um, sometimes the weather and water conditions make it super difficult and you get skunked, but you know this is going to give you the higher likelihood of catching more fish and bigger fish, and I'm going to do it along with you guys and learn with you. Now, the next type of structure we're going to look at is called a hump or an island, and these can usually be found in uh, super deep water and are excellent places to catch fish of all different kinds. Um, I like to drift them and drag them for catfish or anchor on a specific portion of it too, uh, but we're going to find a couple humps or uh, underwater islands and show you uh, what they look like and how you can pick them up on the graph and uh, you know how the fish are going to use that to become active. Okay, now I have a underwater island that I found on the main river channel here. And we'll start zooming in and looking at this thing and how it's formed. So you can see here's the main Tennessee River bed. It's super wide here. And then there's this underwater um, island that's in the center of the lake out here. You would never know it's out here. This is a giant area uh, without looking at your graph or looking at a depth map and understanding how to read it, read it. So this is what's called a hump or a or a, a, a an underwater island, and this is a very large one. There are smaller ones and more defined ones that are uh, that you can have really sharp drop offs that come up really shallow. But I picked this one out because it's so big and it's easier to look at. So we can see here that this can channel cuts to the left and the right of it, and it comes up pretty shallow here. It's 40 something feet on either side of it on both sides, and it comes up to about 18 on the top of it, uh, sometimes 16 to 15 when the water's down in the winter. Um, so these fish are gonna be moving up and down this main channel uh, pretty much all year, uh, and uh, that's just dependent on, uh, you know, time of year, where they're at, and their spawning patterns, stuff like that. But this is an underwater island and what it looks like. Now, if you were going to fish this, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. Uh, what I would do is start up here shallow. Now, you can, let's say we're, we're catfishing. We could come up here and we could drift on the top of this or drag, or we could anchor up on top of it if the fish... Uh, you just want to present your bait slowly to see if they'll eat it. A second way I like to do it, because I find I pick up uh, more fish doing it this way, is you can drift down this main ledge where it drops from the side of the island to the deep water. And that's usually where the fish are going to be stacked up. Now, if they're active or really active, they're going to be up on top of this thing, and you're just going to wear them out. But here we can see an island, and it's got points off the, the front of it, and the back here <clears throat> that's just where the current has cut over the top of it and as time progresses these get even more defined so um, a lot of times as well at the front of these things and at the back you'll have uh, timber that's gotten washed up on it and is stuck so you can mark that um, and I've caught a lot of big flatheads by uh, marking submerged cover uh, like trees and stuff that I've gotten uh, stuck on the front of these and then anchoring up in front of them with live bait or fresh cut bait that's a great way to do it you got to really have current in that situation but um <clears throat> that's something you can look for and again this is a big underwater island now i'm going to try to find a smaller one uh just to show you what a hump or a, a smaller underwater island looks like 
Okay, so I moved up on a different type of reservoir. This is on a higher, uh, like a mountain type one. It's called a highland reservoir, which means they're super deep and super clear, but they have really defined humps when you find one. So we're going to zoom in here, and uh, this is one I just found. You can see how deep this place is as compared to what we were just looking at. It's 60, 70 feet on average, and even down to 100-something down here. But you can see this giant hump right here. And this is out in the middle of the river. That is a very defined bottom contour feature. And I bet this time of the year, the summer when the water's hot, you could just straight up tear some stripers up right here. Schooly ones, they're not very big on this lake. But find something like this downline to it, and that's where you're going to find some big fish. Bass, stuff like that. I'm not really a bass guy, so most of the stuff, uh, how I fish for stuff, isn't catered towards bass because I just don't have the gear for it. But they are going to occupy these same areas as these other fish. Uh, so that is a very defined hump. Now the third type of bottom structure or topography we're going to look at is called a saddle. And it looks like a horse saddle basically. So here we're on a, this is a lake in Kentucky where my uncle lives. And uh, we can see the formation of a, a saddle here. And this is a very defined one. I picked this lake for a reason because it's so deep and this stuff is so easy to look at because it's so defined. So we can see right here, let me turn this off a little bit. Okay, that's, that's a little less lines. But super deep on either side and then it comes up very shallow in between these two channels right here. You can see this. This is kind of at the head of an island. But it forms a saddle. So these fish... Right here, it's deeper, shallow, shallow right here, shallow right here, forms a saddle. And right here is where this activity period is going to occur and up on top of these points right here in between the saddle. So that is another example of a type of bottom structure and contour that you can find on anywhere in the country. Um, and again, this video is not on the techniques that you need to use to fish these but an entry level guide or a look at how to find these and what they are and just to give you a definition of this stuff. Um, and I'm just going to ease our way into more and more complex stuff on how to look at it and how to fish it uh, as we go with some cool fishing videos in between. But what we're looking at here is what's called a saddle. Now the fourth and final type of bottom structure we're going to look at is called a side feeder stream cut. And those are some of the best things to fish. And you've kind of already seen one at the beginning, but I didn't really super define it. So I'm going to show you a side feeder stream cut now. And we're just going to go to, let's see, I haven't ever really looked at Percy Priest or, well, let's take a look at Old Hickory. From what I remember, they, they've got some really good ones. Okay. Here's this giant creek that feeds this main river here. So here's the main river. And when we zoom in, I'm almost going to guarantee that there's a cut coming into this. There it is. There's that side feeder stream cut all the way back in here. And this is the area that these fish will use to become active. It's straight up and down this thing. That is a side feeder stream cut. Out here at the mouth, that's where you're going to find staging fish to spawn that come back in these areas. Uh, so right now, this time of the year, catfish are doing their spawning rituals. And this is an area to pick up fish who have come off the spawn or haven't gone on to it yet. Uh, bass are probably already almost done or are done. Uh, but same type of thing for that. You'll find them here. Let's see if we can even find a deeper one. I like the deepest ones. Yeah, see, that, that one isn't as good. It's not super defined. Let's keep going up here. See, all those super shallow up into it while sometimes they will go back in there not very often so we're just going to keep coming up this river here let's see that one cedar creek no. let's keep going we're just going to keep rolling up here what about that one yeah it looks a little better i think we can find something a little little, little more interesting so cool looking at these things once you begin to understand how to pick them apart. 
Okay, we're getting up in the river run section of it. Let me go. Let's go further down towards the dam a little bit. All right, boom, there's one. Look at this. Crazy shallow up here. Like, if you're not careful during the winter, you can run up on this stuff. But look at this. An exactly defined cut off the main channel leading back in here. And look at that. Somebody already marked something back in there. There's the point that they hit when they're coming back in here. And it splits right there. This is the money spot right here. You see how this is a bar now, but it leads into this area from the main river side feeder stream cut. You can see it right here. The tips of these bars right here are going to hold fish and we're going to move all the way back in it and back in the spring, stuff like that. This is going to be an excellent area to catch fish, bass, everything. This is where they're going to run bait up on top of it when they're active, top water bites, stuff like that. That's an excellent looking spot. And again, tons of different types of stuff like this around the country. You've just got to look at your map and use your resources to find it and uh, go from there. Look, there's another one right here. These are all side feeder stream cuts. And at the mouth of all of these, you're going to find some big fish all year. Uh, sometimes it's better certain times of the year, but this is where you need to start looking. These are the most defined types of structure are these side feeder stream cuts on southern reservoirs uh, and hold the biggest fish. So... That's what you need to look for. All right, guys, I know we just covered a ton of material in a short amount of time. You can rewind back, take notes, all that stuff. But this is fundamental in your growth as a fisherman and as a, a, a trophy fish angler. If you want to do this stuff, you've got to understand how to read the bottom contours of the lake and the different types of contours. Now, in our head, we've got a basic idea of what these lakes look like underwater and um, how they're formed and the types of structures they have in them and in the next few videos we're going to discuss the different types of techniques you can use to fish them and uh, what are the most important things in fishing and how to find the fish so I'll give you a basic explanation of that right now as we're closing depth and speed are the two most important things in fishing. Depth being if you're at the wrong depth, if you're fishing in eight feet of water and the fish are in 60, you're not catching any fish. So you've got to be at the right depth on the right structure to catch the fish. And that changes daily and hourly depending on conditions. And two is speed, how fast you present your lures or your bait, your live bait, your cut bait. That is how you determine the activity level of the fish or the final level of it is the depth at which they're at and the speed at which they want to bait. Um, and those are called controls. That's what you as an angler can control when you're fishing. Now, there's different ways to control those things. Uh, if you're using lures, different types of lures will get deeper, uh, stuff like that. But that's for another video in this series. Um, and this is just part two of that. And again, if you want super in-depth information on this, you need to buy the Buck Perry uh, Home Study Series. It's like eight volumes long, and it's like reading a, a, a science textbook. It's kind of hard to grasp your mind around it, uh, but I'm making these videos or these videos so that you can get an introduction to it and then delve more deeply into it. And I've already had a lot of people who have seen this stuff catch some big giant fish and release them because they have looked at these videos and begun to understand what uh, what what is happening underwater. So thanks for joining along with me. I want this page to be the most informative uh, thing on YouTube for fishing and catching big fish with no BS. And this is just the second video in this series on how to do that. Thanks for coming along. Hit that like and subscribe button. And hopefully in the next video, I'll have my voice all the way back. But, you know, Got to get that grind on. Got to push this content out because this is what I want to do uh, as an occupation. Uh, and it's just going to take time of me doing that. And I'm okay. I'm here to do it. And I'm here to grow along with you and catch some big fish with you guys. So we'll see you on the next video with some big catfish or stripers or whatever else we feel like catching. Uh, and thanks for coming along with me.